Mike Tyson would ensure his place in the history of sports when he became the youngest heavyweight champion ever. But far from being a one-hit wonder in the discipline, his fists continued to write chapters and earn merits that fans fondly remember even today. However, the great Iron Mike does not belong to the select group of boxers who remained undefeated until retirement. And over the years, significant defeats were also starred by this ring beast. Welcome, in today's video, we invite you to go through a countdown that will take you from the Golden Boy's first defeat to the last. Additionally, without leaving anything in the air, you will learn interesting facts and intriguing events surrounding these fights. Do you want to know what kept Tyson in the scene for so long, or why he retired? Find out about that and much more by staying until the end. We open our countdown by going directly to February 11, 1990, the night when Mike Tyson would lose to James Buster Douglas by knockout at 1 minute and 22 seconds of the 10th round of 12 scheduled. Iron Mike would fail in what would be his 10th defense of the World Boxing Council heavyweight title, the 9th of the World Boxing Association heavyweight title, and the 7th of the International Boxing Federation heavyweight title. The fight took place at the Tokyo Dome in Tokyo, Japan, with Octavio Marin as the referee and Ken Morita, Larry Rosadilla, and Masa Kazu Uchida as judges. By the time of the knockout, the judges' decision was divided, with one scoring a draw and the other two each favoring a fighter. Buster Douglas's punch ensured his victory beyond expectations placed on Tyson. Mike has Entering the 10th round, Douglas would begin to solidify his victory with a right hook, followed by a powerful combination that would end in a devastating left that knocked Tyson down for the first time in his career. Tyson tried to get up, but his legs couldn't stop trembling. A difficult kidney ailment, who had every reason to come fast and downtrodden, chosen by no white fighter. Brawling willingly just to try to get in the shot that will cut. What an uppercut by Douglas. Hey. Down goes Tyson. What few know is that, after the fight, promoter Don King tried to overturn the result, claiming that when he fell during the eighth round, Marin had given Douglas a long count. As a result, only the IBF immediately recognized him as the champion while the WBC and WBA retained the title until a thorough investigation process was completed, ending happily for Douglas. When entering the ring against Buster Douglas, Tyson was already scheduled to face Evander Holyfield, the number one contender for the WBA, WBC, and IBF heavyweight titles, guaranteeing him $22 million, the largest purse ever given to a boxer at that time. In case you're wondering, Holyfield was guaranteed only half of that. However, due to the events that unfolded, the encounter between these two titans did not happen until November 9, 1996, when they would face off in the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. This time, the judges were Dalby Shirley, Jerry Roth, and Federico Vollmer. Interestingly, at the moment the fight was stopped, they had Holyfield as the winner on their scorecards. However, the judge's decision was not necessary as Tyson would lose to Evander Holyfield by technical knockout at 37 seconds into the 11th round. Holyfield was well known for being a powerful puncher, but that did not diminish the threat that Iron Mike posed. The situation started to darken for Tyson when, during the 10th round, he was hit with a powerful combination followed shortly after by a big right to the head and a total of eight unanswered punches. In total, during that episode, Tyson was hit about 23 times until saved by the bell. Otra vez la derecha de Van der Holyfield sabe que le han llegado muy bien esas manos. Esa combinación durísima, la derecha, y va a tratar de apagar la última. Se puede repetir la noche de Tokio. Se le están apagando todas las luces. The fight could have ended in the previous round, but 37 seconds into the 11th round, Holyfield landed a severe right on Tyson's head, causing the champion to crash into the ropes, where referee Mitch Halpern embraced him to protect him from the unnecessary massacre awaiting him if he did not intervene. Thus, the great Mike Tyson would lose his first defense of the WBA heavyweight title, and Evander Holyfield would be named Fighter of the Year by the Ring Magazine and the Boxing Writers Association of America. 
Like someone returning to where they were hurt the most, Tyson would be willing to face his greatest fear and repeat the match against Evander Holyfield, seeking redemption. Under the title, The Sound and the Fury, it reached June 28, 1997, which felt like deja vu as both fighters were again in the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. This time, judges Jerry Roth, Dwayne Ford, and Chuck Jamp entered. But what very few know is that originally, Mitch Halpern would repeat his role as referee in the match. However, at the last minute, Tyson's co-director team appeared at an emergency meeting of the Nevada State Athletic Commission on June 26 to request his replacement, claiming that Iron Mike would be psychologically damaged with him in the ring, fearing it would not be fair to him. It was Halpern's decision to resign the same night of the fight after the commission rejected Tyson's team's request because he refused the fight to revolve around him, paving the way for Mills Lane to officiate. Far from proving Tyson's psychological damage, what is certain is that, on that fateful night, Iron Mike was physically shattered. Holyfield would shake Tyson in the first round with a powerful right. Got it again, Bobby. You'll see a right hand a little later in the round. There's the right hand. That's the one that got him trouble. Right in the button. And he got Mike on by the second episode, an accidental clash caused a cut over Mike's right eye. But in the third round, with a better offense reaching Holyfield with a couple of rights, Iron Mike would dig his own grave. After losing the first two rounds on all official scorecards while they were clinched, Tyson bit off a piece of Holyfield's right ear just as the 11th round began. Holyfield would retreat and start jumping in pain. Chasing him, Tyson would push him against the ropes just before Lane stopped the fight and deducted two points from Mike, who claimed the damage to his opponent's ear was caused by a punch. What happened here? It wasn't until the end of the round that Lane noticed the bite mark on Holyfield's ear and disqualified Tyson. In a post-fight interview with Jim Gray, Tyson tried to justify his unsportsmanlike behavior, claiming that the headbutts he received during the match were intentional and that the bites were just retaliation. A retaliation that cost Holyfield eight points on his right ear, which could be sewn back after an MGM Grand employee picked it up and brought it to the fighter's dressing room, where it was placed in an ice bucket, hoping plastic surgeons could reconstruct the damage. What do you think? Do you find Iron Mike's attitude appropriate, or should he have punished Holyfield with his fists, demonstrating his greatness? Opening the second part of our countdown, we jump to a new millennium to the night of June 8, 2002, when, at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, Lennox Lewis defeated Tyson by knockout at 2 minutes and 25 seconds of the eighth round of 12 previously scheduled. This time, it was Tyson who entered the ring as the challenger, aiming to snatch the WBC Heavyweight World title, the IBF Heavyweight World title, and the Ring Magazine Heavyweight title from Lewis, marking the first defense for the fighter in all these titles. Tensions around this fight escalated much more on January 22, 2002 when, at a press conference to officially announce it, Tyson, one of Lewis's bodyguards and his rival, would engage in a kind of clandestine fight that would end in a real riot with both fighters on the floor, Mike biting Lewis's leg, and the president of the WBC disoriented after hitting his head and falling to the ground in the midst of the chaos. Genuinely, the fight, from the opening bell, turned into a war, with the ending coming when Tyson, partially finished, would attempt to defend himself, exposing himself to Lewis's clean right landing on the side of his chin. Thus, Tyson would fall backward and ultimately need assistance to get up and reach his corner. Lennox Lewis trying to finish off Mike Tyson. Doing a good job. He's got heart. Now, He's you can't take that from him. Big right hand from Lewis and Tyson. It's over. Nobody should be able to, There's no one in the world can take that from Lennox Lewis now. After the fight, Tyson personally apologized to Lewis for the bite at that press conference and publicly expressed his respect and esteem for the fighter, as well as the desire for a rematch. Lennox, who would resign from the IBF title three months later, stated that a second encounter would only take place if the public demanded it. Two years later, another dark episode in Mike Tyson's boxing history would be sealed by the fists of Danny Williams, who, on July 30, 2004, would face the legend in the ring at the State Federal Facility Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. The media around the fight claimed that Williams was the type of fighter Tyson usually destroys, so it was expected that if needed, the scorecards of Dan McClellan, Johnny Monson, and Steve Ryan would favor him. What was least considered was the possibility that the safety count, voiced by Dennis Alfred, would be performed for Iron Mike himself. 
at 38 years old and about 14 and a half years after his stunning defeat against Buster Douglas, the youngest champion in history returned to the ring after a long period of inactivity. While the sound of the bell seemed to have awakened the beast, the one who had defeated Clifford Etienne in just 49 seconds 17 months earlier, the power of the great iron Mike seemed to diminish as the rounds went by. Another left hook upstairs, a left uppercut staggers Williams! Williams, and when he throws it, he's able to... Williams, the man who claimed to cry from pressure before every fight, which had labeled him as a weak and easy opponent for Tyson, managed to knock him down at 2 minutes and 51 seconds of the fourth round. Holyfield and Lennox Lewis, and he's having his way. Firing shots. Tyson in some good... After the fight, Williams claimed it was the most important victory of his career while Tyson simply went to his dressing room without intending to say a word. The frenzied crowd of 17,273 people had gone crazy with the outcome of the match, from which, for the first time, the suggestion of the legend's possible retirement emerged. Closing our countdown, we stop at June 11, 2005, when Kevin McBride would be the one to take the turn to tame the beast in the ring at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C., United States. Tyson faced significant financial problems, so it could be assumed that this was the real reason behind each continued match he accepted, despite only starring in moments that seemed to stain the impeccable history he had until a few years ago, and opponents behind. The fight seemed to unfold normally under the watchful eyes of Tammy Jenkins, Steve Rados, and Paul Artist, and the supervision of the legendary Joe Cortez, until the beginning of the sixth round. In the midst of a clinch, Tyson would try to break McBride's left arm, reminiscent of the moment he experienced against Francois Bota back in 1999. Tyson throwing it all out there, jumping. Later, with an intentional headbutt, the beast would open a cut over his opponent's left eye. Two points would be deducted by Joe Cortez after the ringside doctor examined the cut. Just as the closing bell rang for the episode, Tyson fell backward against the ropes, but the referee considered it a slip. Sixth round! And if McBride actually wins this round, it would be a 10-7 round. He wants Joe Cortez to help him. Exhausted, Mike didn't seem to want to get up, but without a safety count, he had no choice but to do so and return very slowly to his corner, from where, moments later, he would retire from the fight, sitting comfortably on his stool. After the fight, the Washington Post pointed out that McBride had enjoyed good fortune since, despite Tyson being outscored in five of the six rounds, Tammy Jenkins and Steve Rados had Mike leading 57-55 to 55 for the moment the fight was stopped. On his part, Tyson, who had lost three of his last four fights, announced his retirement, stating that he no longer had the guts to be in the sport and his lack of desire to disrespect the discipline he loves. He concluded his strong statements by affirming that his heart was no longer in the ring. On another note, McBride would claim that Tyson was crazy because, according to his testimony, he had bitten his nipple so forcefully that it had left teeth marks around it. Undoubtedly, the youngest heavyweight champion in history, the living legend, the great Iron Mike, will be remembered as one of the greatest boxers of modern times. But each of his defeats and dirty plays demonstrates that even the best, no one is invincible. To you who have made it this far, we can only thank you for your attention and invite you to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed today's countdown. Remember that you can subscribe by activating the notification bell to receive much more content about the sport and your favorite fighters. To change the negative atmosphere a bit, what was your favorite victory of Mike Tyson? Tell us why in the comments.